little more absent, Mr. Bliss? No, no, don't bother about it. I don't know what I want. Anything wrong, sir? Yes, everything, Francois. Let me make you a map. Don't help. It's just me. I'm feeling terrible. Good evening, Lord Huntington. Oh, good evening, Henri. Has Mr. Bliss arrived yet? Mr. Bliss is waiting for you in the bar. Oh, good. As busy as ever, I see. Good evening. What do you have? Dry martini, please. Haven't those girls arrived yet? Not yet. Who cares? Come on, let's sit down over here. Look, Ronnie, I got you a note, but I'm blowed if I'll lend you a thousand pounds. Oh, never mind about that. I shouldn't have asked you, really, but you know how broke I am and you're rolling. Oh, it's not a question of whether or not I can afford it. The point is, it's too easy to lose one's friend that way. No, yeah, well, let's forget it, shall we? I shouldn't like anything to spoil our friendship. Oh, no, don't let's talk about money anyway, Ronnie. I'm an ill man. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not kidding. It's on the level. I have something wrong with me. Oh, well, if you're really feeling ill, why don't you let Sir James Allroyd have a look at you? Oh. Sir James Allroyd. He's a bit of a crank. He'll charge you 20 guineas. He's the best diagnostician there is. Oh, no, no, no. He's what? <laughs> don't ask me to repeat that. Anyway, he'll tell you what's the matter with you. He's the best doctor in London. Public misery number one. Come on, let's go and eat. Yes, I'm hungry. All right. Here you are. Thank you, Mr. Bush. Ernest, everyone's been admiring my bracelet. It's sweet of you. That won't do her any good. All that woman needs is to sack five of her seven servants and do six hours housework a day for three months. I'm afraid you'll break out someday hmm? and tell one of them the truth. <coughs> Lord Roberts, please. Just a moment. What is the matter here? My name is Bliss, Ernest Bliss. I had an appointment for 11 o'clock. I'm sorry, Mr. Bliss, but you were half an hour late. Sir James will see you now, Mr. Bliss. Rather difficult man to see, aren't you, Sir James? Not for those who are punctual. Any other complaint? Do you think I'd have waited an hour and a half if I hadn't? Oh, forget about that. What do you think's the matter with you? I don't know. That's why I came to see you. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm nervous. I never do anything and I'm always tired. Yeah. Well, just take off your shirt and lie down on that couch. There's nothing wrong with your blood pressure. Your muscles are a bit flabby, but your heart's quite sound. Well, then what's the matter with me? Money. Money? Is that not an illness? Mm. In your case, it's a disease. Most people break down through overwork. Yours is caused by self-indulgence. Really? Is that so? You know, your father was a clever man. What are you looking for? My tie. You've got it on. Oh. But he made a big mistake when he left you two million pounds to play the fool with. Believe it or not, Sir James, I'm paying you 20 guineas to give me medical advice, not a lecture. My advice should be worth 50,000 pounds to you. I suppose I'm getting a bargain for 20, eh? Certainly, if you take it. What makes you think I wouldn't? No patient of mine in Harley Street ever has. Hmm. Sounds interesting. 
What is it? Well, disappear for a time. Earn your own living. Live on a few pounds a week if you can make them. If not, go hungry. Do that for a year and I guarantee it'll make you fit. That's rather a tall order. Of course, a certain amount of moral stamina would be needed. Oh, you think I've no stamina, eh? Well, no hard feelings. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Bliss. You don't seem to like me. A medical man's time is limited. Besides, there's so much genuine suffering in the world that money would alleviate. If you visit my clinic in the East End, if you can spare the time. I'm being unprofessionally rude, perhaps, because of the fifth patient I've had here this morning suffering from the same complaint. Too much money. Look here, Sir James. You just refuse to shake hands with me. All right, I'll make you an offer. Your clinic needs money. I'll bet you that 50,000 pounds you say your advice is worth against an apology and an honest handshake that I can take your advice and follow it to the letter. That should be quite a simple matter for you. Your bookmaker, your gunsmith, even your tobacconist might find you a job at a few pounds a week. Not at all. I'll set out with only five pounds. And without driving the slightest benefit from my name, money, or present position, I'll earn my living for a year. And if I do touch my own money, for my own use, you get 50,000 pounds. Big words, Mr. Bliss. Big promises. But I'm afraid I can't take them seriously from you. Before you gave me that look, there was a sporting chance you'd win. Now you're having a hope. Then the bet is off. No, the bet's on, and I'm going through. Which is it? Left. Oh. Those heavy shoes along might have to do a lot of walking. Yes. I'm going to get about all now. I won't need these. No, sir. Tell me something, Clara. Is it true that the hardest job in the world is doing nothing? Yes, sir. Well, I'm afraid that's going to be your job for the next 12 months. Yes, sir. 12 months? Then where do I send your trunks? Trunks? No, all I'll need is in their bag. Yes. For 12 months? Yes, sir. Yes. But, of course, your dress clothes. No, I won't have any use for them. Oh. I'd better take a look around, see if I've forgotten anything. Yes. Oh, Cloud. Sir? These Lion Yaga cigars, keep them in condition, will you? They're the last of their crop. Yes, sir. Oh, and the wine, especially the 84 port. I don't want that touched. Yes, sir. Your pocket. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Now, look, Klaus, what is this? I found notes, sir. Right. Now, you're a witness that this is all the money I'm taking with me, aren't you? Uh, yes, sir. Fine. And your cheek. Oh, no. No, I won't need that for a year. At least, I hope not. Now, put it in the desk drawer. Yes. No, no, don't bother now. If the bank's ready, take it downstairs and fetch me. No, no. Don't worry. I'll do it myself. I'd better start now. Oh, and Klaus, refer all letters and inquiries to Mr. Crawley. And I'll see you back here a year from now. And I hope you won't be as bored doing nothing as I've been. Well, what exactly are you going to do, sir? Oh, that's exactly what I don't know. Well, goodbye, Klaus. That's...
been out of work. And he's owing me a bit. Well, we pays our rent, Mrs. E. And if we can't get Bliss's room, we move. You can't turn round in here. I can't turn him out into the street, Mrs. Matthews. Oh, hello, Mrs. Heath. You feeling very tired, my dear? Like a cup of tea? Haven't you anything else to say to me, Mrs. Heath? Oh, I'm afraid you overheard. But don't let it worry you. Well, uh, well, thanks for the mending. It's absolutely professional. <laughs> They're good tenants, aren't they? Best I've got. Yes, yes, I haven't paid my rent for two weeks. Not another word. If they goes, they goes. Well, that's all right, but you need the money. Never mind that. There's them that can pay, and them that can't. And I knows one can suffer. young man. You want to sell my alpha stoves? That's right, sir. Miss Clayton, bring me that pile of applications for this job, please. Yes, Mr. Masters. Oh, uh, Mr. Masters, why bother going through all those? After all, I'm here on the spot. And believe me, Mr. Masters, this is the first time in my life I've, I've been without a job. You've been very lucky. But uh, have you ever had one? Now, young man, 27 applications from travelers of experience. Why should I chuck all these and engage you? Well, look, Mr. Masters, let me tell you the truth. I've been walking around for weeks trying to get a job. If I don't get one soon, I'll starve. I've got to get this one. Oh, say, I got the job. I was afraid you would. Mr. Masters can't say no to anyone. Afraid I would? Say, I can sell stoves. What's your name? Oh, uh, Ernest Bliss. What's yours? Clayton. Start tomorrow, April 21st. 5% on all sales and two pounds a week salary, Mr. Bliss. Bring any orders to me and come to me for your wages. Thanks. Now, here's some catalogs and full details of the alpha stove. Fine. Some price lists. And here's your order book. Oh, what? Your order book. Oh, uh, order book, yes. <laughs> oh, you don't think much of me now, but you'll be surprised when I get started. Goodbye, Miss Clayton. So you haven't got started yet. Oh, uh, I know, Miss Clayton. But, but in the past three weeks, I've tried dozens of firms. And there's always some reason for not buying it. Either, either the stove is too large or it's too small or the price is too high or it isn't advertised enough. Or, 
Oh, well, maybe I'm just a rotten salesman. But I believe in the stove. It's a good stove. My luck will change. You look very tired. Let me make you a cup of tea. That's awfully kind of you. I thought you didn't like me. Business has nothing to do with personal feelings. May I help you? I'm worried about Mr. Masters. His life savings are in these stoves. Oh, bad is all that, huh? Yes, we'll have to close down shortly. Oh, I'm sorry. I feel sort of partly to blame, you know? Oh, you mustn't say that. You did your best. What do you do now? Do you live with your parents? No, my mother and sister live up north. I stay at a girl's club. Pretty rotten life for you, isn't it, being cooped up in an office like this? Oh, it hasn't been so bad. At least I've had my job. <laughs> so you have it to hold on to. Well, if I don't get another quickly, I'll have to start hinting to my friends that I need free meals. <laughs> well, that isn't so good, is it? Free meals? Yes, if I can get any. Wait, that gives me an idea. 500 pounds. <laughs> right. So this means that Aldroyd gets his 50,000 pounds. What? Because you've lost your bet. Oh, oh, after all I've been through for the past four weeks, do you think I'm going to quit now? The bet was that you'd live on what you could earn yourself without using your own money. Yes. For my own benefit, that was the bet. I'm not touching this. It's for someone else. Look. Here's what I have left from my last week's wages. And here's what I'm living on. Good heavens. Yes, it's just about enough for one meal, too. I tasted this. I find it excellent, and to serve it out to the people. Yes, sir. Pretty enterprising, all this. Oh, yes. Well, it's just a little idea to strengthen our retail trade, you see. Oh, your wholesale. Well, of course, that's, uh, that's hardly in our line. If you'll excuse me a moment, I have a couple of other buyers waiting for me. Oh, wait a moment. Surely you can spare me just a couple of moments to show me the stoves? Well, uh, yes, yes, I suppose it can be done. Come this way, will you? little ventilator. It's patented, of course. Yes, yes, the uh, master's patent. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, miss, would you mind telling the two gentlemen that are waiting for me, the uh, two buyers, that I'll join them in just a moment? Now, there's, there's no reason to divide the business between a dozen firms. Well, of course, uh, we might be able to manage your entire output. Oh. In the meantime, uh, I'll order a hundred. A hundred? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's all I can at the moment. Oh, uh, no, uh, yes, yes. The usual trade terms. Uh, well, uh, look, 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 old man, I... I wish you'd wait and see Mr. Masters himself. He'll be along in just a minute. All right, while we're waiting, I'll write the order. The, uh... The order. Oh, yes, the order. <laughs> well, you know, it's so noisy around here. Uh, my, uh... Order book. Yes, yes, oh, yes, I'll get it. Oh, look at that, look at that. My first order. What? Oh, uh, in, in the new book. <laughs> Give me offer. Thank you. Oh, it's Mr. Masters now. Mr. Masters, I want you to know the chief buyer at Elements, Mr. Masters. Good morning, Mr. Masters. What's the meaning of all this, Mr. Well, Elements have just placed a little order for 100 stones. 100? Oh, it's only a trial order, of course. 
filtry. Well, I've already explained that we're really not interested in wholesale business. You must appreciate, Mr. Masters, that if we can get together, we can take at least 40,000 a year. Certainly. Mm -hmm. But no, we oh, haven't. Oh, no, no, Mr. Masters, we can at least consider the matter. Well, think it over. I know you're busy at the moment, so I'll call at your office tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning. Look at that. But where'd you get all the money to run this place? Well, I'm coming to that. It's, uh, I borrowed 500 pounds on your behalf from a young fool I know who uh, has more money than is good for him. So here's what's left of it, and his solicitor will send you a bill. Oh, uh, by the way, may I? I'm a trifle short. I had to hire this suit. <laughs> I owe you a commission on a hundred stoves. Yes, well, Mr. Masters, I'm afraid I can't take that, you see. I have to leave your employ. What do you take me for? You save me from going under. No, no. You stay on here as a partner. Bless you. Can't leave now. Please don't. Well, I'm afraid I must. These are my own clothes in here. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Masters. Don't be silly. There's big money in this. I'm offering you a partnership. <laughs> I won't take no for an answer. I've got to have a look around this place. Miss Clayton, <laughs> this isn't goodbye for us. It's all too insane. Yes, I, I suppose it seems so, but... Look, when I'm settled in my next job, can I call you up and take you to dinner or a show or something? Well, there's no use prolonging the agony, is there? Goodbye. Let's try this. Mm. It's a marvelous wine. I hope you're right. You should have phoned me sooner. Even if you hadn't found work, I could have paid for the dinner. Do girls pay for dinners? I hadn't thought about it. Well, I might not have bought you the wine. Yes, but this is a celebration. To your entrance into the cabbage business? Oh, no, no. To our first dinner together. Here's to us. Ah, oh, but it's good. It's lovely. So cheap. My goodness, I thought it would taste like red ink. I fancy this magic. Yeah, it is your magic, too. Mm -hmm. It's you who turn this cheap wine, this cheap food, into a feast for the gods. I have an idea. He's done that for us. For you? If the signorina and the signore would like to talk, it would give Giuseppe the greatest pleasure. Oh, thanks. It's funny, that's my favorite dance tune. Best tune I ever heard. Come on, let's do something about it. I'm leaving this master. Really? Why? For the same reason you did. What do you mean? Well, you turned him down, so he wants to make me his partner. Partner? Oh, the old scoundrel. Oh, I don't think so. Rather fond of him. Well, he wants to marry you, eh? Well, it makes it rather awkward. Two of us in the same office. Yeah. But look, Francis, what did a fellow like that offer a young girl like yourself? Security. I don't know. Well, what are you going to do? Same thing you've been doing. Look for something else. Good girl. It's not so easy, you know. Well, your driving test was satisfactory. But driving isn't everything. What we want is punctuality and service. 
Yes, sir. Oh, uh, uh, what about my livery, sir? The uniform will cost ten pounds. Oh. Huh. We supply it, you pay for it out of your wages. Pound a week, to me. Very good, sir. Report at seven in the morning. Yes, sir. Hello. Did you get the job? Oh, sure, sure. I thought you would, because old Mike's uniform will just about fit you. Yeah, can't smoke here, you know. Thanks. Thanks for rules. Wait a minute. What was that about Mike in the uniform? Oh, he got the sack after six weeks. They always do. The boss never lets them stay here. I thought there was something wrong. Something wrong? Of course there is. You don't think I've got the thing to bits for nothing, do you? No, no, I don't suppose you have. Do you think you're doing? I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I didn't know she'd backed into this place. Well, why did you look where you were going? What kind of dri driving to call that, anyway? Ernest! Ronnie! Well, out. How are you? Okay, what do you mean by giving us the slip like that? Yes, well, I thought I'd better drop out of sight for a while. I say, old man, don't misunderstand me, but if a fly was any use to you, for old times' sake... You know, Ronnie, that's funny. Because the last time we met, I refused to help you. Yes. You should make me feel pretty ashamed about that. Honestly, I, I thought you were rolling. No, Ronnie. Nice of you, but uh, put it back in your pocket. And thanks. Okay. Hey, Ronnie. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Don't stand there arguing with that chauffeur. It's Ernest Bliss. He's working as a chauffeur. Ernest. I'd like to speak to him. No, wait for me. I'd like to speak below. Oh, very well. Ernest. Claire. <laughs> oh, you're with Ronnie, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, perhaps you'd like to engage a good chauffeur at your service. It wasn't very nice of you to chuck us all just because you had bad luck. Yes, well, uh, Claire, a chauffeur's wages, you know, hardly... Yes, I know. A chauffeur's wages for the whole year wouldn't buy one of the things you gave me. No, I think you're right. Of course, there's always the uh, tips. You mustn't forget the tips. <laughs> you haven't changed. Goodbye, Ernest. Bye-bye. came after lunch from Bautier's. The one I left in his car last night, and this one, twin brother. Now, I've got one to tell you. When I was dressing this evening, a bank messenger came to the door of my flat and left a package with ten one-hundred-pound notes in it. A thousand pounds? Hmm. You know, it's a funny thing. When I offered Ernest a fiver yesterday, he reminded me that he once refused to lend me a thousand. Doesn't make sense. It certainly doesn't. I knew you couldn't resist a call like that. But it's 20 miles out. Do you need the gloves? No, thank you. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps you better pop them in. I'll telephone your chauffeur. No, no, no. Don't wake him up. Bring up the garage. We hired a car from last time. Hello. Yes. Pick up who? Oh, Dr. Aldroyd. Yes. 19. Dock Road, Poplar. Very good. Smith, sir. Take this and go to. But it's my night off, Mr. Edwards. Oh, very well. Send Bliss for the Dagnar. Yes, sir. You'd better get home as soon as you've cleared up, Miss Mills. Good night. Good night, Mr. James. My secretary told you where to go. Yes, sir. Make the best time you can. It's a very urgent case. Yes, sir.
crisis definitely passed. Nothing for you to worry about now, Mr. Dankford. Thanks to you, Doctor. She said you'd come if I sent you a wire. I, I didn't believe you would. Hmm? I don't know what to say, and as for the fee... Oh, there's right no to... fee. I will just get back and have some sleep. Seven Harley Street. Sorry to kept up so late. I, uh, I'd rather have a handshake than this tip, Sir James. Why not both? Oh, no. No, I haven't won that bet yet. What the devil do you mean by that? Well, it'll be uh, seven months next Tuesday. And believe me, the first seven months are the hardest. Good night, sir. Won a sweepstake. What would you do, huh? I never win a sweepstake. Oh, you might. Well, if I did, my clothes, rooms full of clothes, mm -hmm. and I'd have a big car, a chauffeur. If you want all this thing so bad, then Masters is doing all right now, isn't he? Yeah. My friends from the theater play for the signorina. You're a darling. Zeppi, you know you ought to own this place, not just be head waiter here. Oh, what I could do. Francis, tell me. You wouldn't marry a fellow without a bean just because you liked him, would you? No. So I was just wondering. I sort of thought it would be fine if you could. need you any longer. Very good, sir. But, uh, I want to see you. Yes, sir. Can you make it Thursday morning? Ten o'clock? Here, sir? No, my flat. Eleven Regents Park Gate. Eleven Regents Park Gate? Yes, flat six. Did, uh, did you say flat six? Yes. Make yourself comfortable, Mr. What's your name? Um, Brown. Brown. Edward Brown. Brown. Say, that's a very nice cigar you're smoking there. Yes. Tip top condition. Oh. Not many of them left. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> you should worry. Uh, <clears throat> have a glass of port. Thanks. You do yourself pretty well, don't you, Mr. Dorrington? That's a before port, too, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so good, it's a pity to drink it. Oh, yes. <laughs> I agree with you there. How do you like this place? Oh, it suits me fine. Belongs to a young fellow who's traveling around the continent for a bit. Oh. Left his man in charge. Poor fellow having nothing to do, got betting on the dogs. So he lets it to me for a five or a week. Tell me, where is this man now? In his room drinking whiskey. Oh, I see. You fellas drink the pot and he drinks the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but we all smoke his cigars. Oh, that's fine. Just one big happy family. Yeah. You have a cigarette. 
Do you ever have a look round? Yes, I would. It might be very interesting. Yeah. Of course, since I took possession, I've improved this place a bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, look at this. Bought this little fellow myself. The Caledonian Market. Tasteful, isn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. Makes you think. And look here. He's sure for thousands, this bottle of Earl's Mac. Oh. And the silly fellow kept it in the hall. Oh, it's the chef Dover of his collection. I moved it in here right away. Yes, well, look, Mr. Dorrington, I don't mean to appear inquisitive or anything, but after all, why did you ask me to come here? I'll show you. Anything strike you about that? What do you mean? That Ernest Bliss. The fool who owns this place. Notice any resemblance to yourself? Well, uh, yes, now that you mention it, I suppose there is. Mm -hmm. What did a man like you do for 10,000 pounds? 10,000 pounds? Well, uh, practically anything short of murder. Good boy. Then we understand one another. Quite. Now, let's get together. I've been practicing Ernest Bliss's signature for months. Found his bank books in that drawer. Mm -hmm. How much do you think he's got on current account? Oh, I haven't the slightest idea. 160,000 odd. 160,000 odd? Isn't it simple? Think of all that money lying idle. No one to use it. Well, uh, what are we going to do about it? This. Mm-hmm. Pay cash, 30,000 pounds. Ernest Bliss. Are you going to cash that? No. You are. Oh, that's the big idea, huh? Well, what makes you think I can get away with it? When once you're dressed up in one of Bliss's suits, the bank will pay out all right. Simple, isn't it? Yes, it's so simple. What's to prevent me walking away with the whole lot? I am. Now go and get dressed. I'm coming with you. Good morning. Haven't seen you in a long time. Nice to see you again, Mr. Pitts. It's a hot amount, isn't it? Yes, quite. Excuse me, Mr. Bliss, but uh, did you sign this yourself? Why do you ask? Well, it seems absurd since you present it. But if this check came through in the ordinary way, I'd say it was forged. Congratulations, you know your job. Mr. Bliss, what is the meaning of this? Oh, no time for explanations now. I'll tell you what to do. Get some old papers, shove them into an envelope, and pass them out to me quickly. I'm watched. Well? Everything all right? Have you got the money? Hey, relax. Say, take it easy. Everything's fine. Perfect. Say, this fellow's grand. It was so easy. Say, it was just like taking candy from a kid. You couldn't have found anyone better. Hey! hey just... Keep your hands off that gun. You're trying to double cross us? No, I'm not trying to double cross you. You fellas made a mistake, that's all. You're very lucky that for reasons of my own, I'm not calling in the police. Now get out of here. What do you mean? What's the game, Brown? I'm not Brown, I'm Bliss. You know, the fool that owns this place. Say, hey, how do you like that? <laughs> and why did you cash that check? Well, as you seem to have found out, I kept quite a lot of money in that account. I just wanted to know whether the bank would recognize a forged signature or not. Come off it. Think of something better. All right, you don't believe I'm Bliss? If I can get Klaus away from that bottle, he'll prove it to you. What do we care who he is? I tell you, he's got that money. Come on. Give it to us. Yes, that's right. Hand it over, Brown. All right. Ah! I want that!
Klaus, did you hit him with that bottle? Yes, sir. Oh, Klaus, it was the 84 port. No, no, don't worry any more about it, Klaus. I quite understand. Believe me, sir, it was having no work making me go wrong. It was too hard a job having nothing to do at all. Of course it was. That used to be the trouble with me. Sir? By the way, you'd better keep the rest of that port locked up. I might need it for a celebration. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to get married in about four months. No, oh, sir, whatever will you be doing next? Uh, Miss Clayton, I want no more than just a typist. I don't quite understand. All my most confidential papers will go through your hands. A relationship of trust, a friendship, I might almost say intimacy is called. Well, I think I can be trusted, Mr. Montague. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, are you ready to start work at once? Of course, the figure I mentioned could be raised, possibly, if we get on together. I hope we shall, Mr. Montague. Mr. Montague said he needs me to take notes for some very important deal. Yes, but dear, I know something about that, that place he's taking you to. Oh, but Ernie, dear, I can't afford to lose my job. Besides, I can take care of myself. You know, I've got a funny feeling that your employer's car is going to develop engine trouble. Oh, so that's why you wanted to know where he kept his car. Uh-huh. Well, he can always hire a car. Yes, and he'll tell his secretary to hire one for him, see? Stupid. Come on. Good evening, Mr. Montague. Everything's ready. Oh, good. First, I'll put the typewriter, miss. Oh, uh, leave it on the table there. And get yourself a drink. Thank you, sir. Uh, will you go ahead, Miss Clayton? Capable fellow, that chauffeur you got for me. <laughs> ah, yeah. Nice and warm in here, isn't it? Uh, won't you sit down, Miss Clayton? Thank you. Yeah. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> and I'll order you a cocktail. Shall I serve the caviar, sir? Oh, put it on the table. Thank you, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, my dear, I'll just go and see if my business friends have come. Certainly, Mr. Marvin. Yes, sir. How would you like to earn a fiver? Very much indeed, sir. Well, tinker about with your engine and after dinner, come and report to me. Report what, sir? Well, that your car's broken down and there's no train back. You've just heard there's a big belt of fog between here and London and there's no chance of getting back to town tonight. You won't forget, will you? Leave it to me. I won't forget. Smart fellow. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Most annoying. My friends have been held up with a fog. <laughs> Don't matter, my dear. We'll have a little dinner here together, eh? Just the two of us, before returning to town. I don't want to be late, Mr. Montague. I have to be early at the office. Oh, that's all right, my dear. Come along, come along. Tonight we'll forget the office. Yeah. Sit here. That's right. <laughs> now then, uh, uh, yeah, leave that. I'll see to it. Very good, sir. Ah, that's beautiful caviar. Now the fun's going to start. How right you are. Hello, Francis. We're leaving. I'm taking you back to London. How dare you, you insolent... Shut up. Come on, dear. I shall report you to your manager. Shut up. Wait for me in the car, dear. Get out of here at once. Eat your caviar. You have the cheek to want your wages up to last night, eh? 
If you can consider yourself lucky, Mr. Montague didn't have you up for assault. Oh, I suppose my last four days' pay goes into your pocket, huh? No, it does not. And that uniform's not paid for. Return it. Yes. And the poor fellow that gets my job inherits this uniform and pays you a pound a week for it. If you don't return it, I'll summon you. Get out. But, Mr. Edwards, if this Montague was treating that girl that way, this is the only thing a decent man could do. Mind your own business. No, oh, thanks, Bill. Keep out of it. It's my funeral. As a matter of fact, Bronson, your work's been slacking off lately. You can take a week's notice yourself. Oh, now, look here. I'll go. He's got nothing to do with this. Besides, he's got a wife and two kids. You can't sack him. Oh, can't I? Look here. When this garage belongs to you, my lord, I'll accept orders from you. But not before. Wait. That's the first sensible thing I've heard you say. So long, Bill. No, no, Crawley, don't argue about the price. I'll take the Sun Motor Hire place at that figure. And look, when you close the deal, fire Edwards. Edwards, he's the manager in charge now. And give his job to a mechanic named Bill Bronson. No, Bronson. No, no, no. B-R-O-N-S-O-N. -O -N. Right. I'm going to get that bus driving job in the morning. They promised it to me. Besides, everything's going to be changed in a few weeks. I, uh, I had a dream the other night. Yes, I dreamt about uh, Cinderella. I was the fairy godmother and the prince all rolled into one. <laughs> You're absolutely good for nothing. I let my family down. I give up everything I ever wanted. If I marry you... What are you going to, dear? I think I must be crazy. You know, Francis, I only made two serious bets in my whole life. I'm going to win them both. What are they? Well, the first one doesn't matter, but the second one I made after I met you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I bet myself I'd make you marry the stove salesman, the greengrocer's assistant, the chauffeur. And you win your bet. Oh, what a fool I am. And money and all those things don't matter. They don't exist. Because I love you. Telegram for Miss Clayton. Any reply? Just a moment, please. It wasn't fair to let me tell you this before I knew you were out of work, Francis. If the doctor says Helen can't live, unless she's taken to a winter resort, you did quite right to come to London and tell me. After all, I'm a sister. You can't do any more about it than I can. It's only a crazy dream. Dreams don't come true. Not for people like us. It'll be all right about Helen. I'll send her to Switzerland. Did you say Julia? But I know where I can get a job. From a man who's very fond of me. Good man, Mother. Fine man. He wants to marry me. No, Miss Clayton has left here. A new address. I'm afraid I don't know it. It's been two weeks. 
Not a word. They don't even know at the place she lived where she's gone. She took her things with her. If you spend all your time looking for this young lady, I presume you've left your employment on that bus. Well, of course, of course I have. But if you draw money from me and buy her jewels, dresses and things like that, what about your bet? Only a few more days. This is a matter of 50,000 pounds. Well, all right, then. Pay your draw this 50,000 pounds. Don't you see, if I go through with this bet, it may lose me, Francis. Can't you understand that? I'm afraid I can't. Well, I wanted her to take me the way she thought I was. Poor. And that wasn't fair to her, was it? So you're going to lose 50,000 pounds just to satisfy this girl? Oh, what's the use of talking to you about love? Very little, no doubt. But would a young lady disappear like this if there weren't some other interest? Nonsense. She loves me. She said so. I know she does. There's never been anybody else. She wouldn't do that. She couldn't do that. Whatever that may be, I rather fancy that is just what she has done. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Here, what are you after? When you see Miss Clayton hang this sign up. Now, don't worry about it. It's a little joke about it. I'll be at the outside door, and don't you let her see you do it. Hello, Francis. Oh. I was afraid you'd find me. What's the matter? Why won't you look at me? I'm going to marry Mr. Masters. Goodbye, Ernest. Good morning, Mr. Oh, dear me, not working. Oh, that is tough luck, isn't it? Four flights of stairs, too. Mm -hmm. Same old office? Francis, really, I've hunted everywhere for you. I even gave up my job to look for you. Probably the last one I'll ever have. Please. You're only making it harder for both of us. Well, remember Browning's poem, The Last Ride Together? Why can't we have a last walk together? Look, Francis, let me get this clear. Why do you say it'll only make it harder for us? Oh, fool. Was it because you knew if you saw me, you couldn't, uh, couldn't go back to Masters? Oh, please don't. Ask. Two people like us having an earthly job. Not together we hadn't. Tell me, are you in love with this stove king? No answer. So you're marrying him for his money, eh? Yes. Now will you go? No. What made you change your mind? Francis, we found something together worth more than money. I can't let you go. Thinking that about me. Listen, it isn't for myself. My sister's seriously ill. And this is the only possible way I can help her. Oh, darling, why didn't you tell me so before? Well, you had your own worries, and there wasn't anything you could do. Yes, but don't you see? I thought you were doing it for furs and jewels and cars and all that kind of stuff. Well, they wouldn't have mattered. You do see why I have to do it, don't you? Let me go now. We're only making it worse. No, Francis. I've got to talk to you. Diamond bracelets, three vanity bags, two rings, one pair of diamond earrings, one diamond brooch, one diamond hair clip, one jewel case. Twelve sets of lingerie. Giuseppe! Ah, the gracious oh, you. Ah, oh, now relax, Giuseppe. Now look, now that you own that restaurant, don't forget, never charge more than the usual one in six for dinner. And if ever you see a young fellow with a young girl and they sing hard up, throw in the wine and charge it to me, will you? 
Sì, sì, signore. Grazie. Mille, grazie. Your work is my love. Oh, dear old Ernie Fish. Never knew the difference between a commentator and a decoration. <laughs> Hello, Claire. Hello, Hello Ronnie. Hello, Ernie. Thanks so much for what you did. Make it a couple of thousand next time, will you? I see there is a Santa Claus, Ernie. Ah, uh, yes, well, Claire, I, uh, I wouldn't mention that if I were you. There's somebody coming along who might not like it, you know. All right. Come and meet some friends of mine, will you? Mrs. Martin. Miss Winton, Lord Hollison. How Gentlemen, Miss Winton, Lord Hollison. How did that? Lord Hollison. Hello, dear. It was you who sent the money. Oh, sir, I, I can't say no words. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Heath. You were very kind to me. You taught me much. But you worked very hard. I just want to know that you've been taken care of for the rest of your life. God bless you, sir. Uh -huh. Miss Abby, come on over here. Sit with Mrs. Heath. But look out for her. She has a way of stealing into people's hearts. When I say it, I go with that. Is that it? <laughs> And my apologies. Although I lost my bet, only by three days, you win. You carried out my prescription to the letter. And I can't accept your check. Well, Sir Jane, that's an academic point. You see, you'd have had your 50,000 pounds anyway. I decided that the night I drove you out of the country. And now that you're all here, my friends, you have been so kind to me during the past. I want you to meet my wife. Pass it. You ready? They're all waiting for you. Darling, you're crying. What's the matter, baby? Cinderella didn't cry in the story. <laughs> but she would have in real life. I'm too happy not to cry. Too happy. <laughs>